for this frame, we have to apply the principle of superposition. OK, so why we have to use the principle of superposition? Because of combination of external loading and side sway in one in one uh, frame. OK, so we have to we have to analyze. We have to analyze FEM fixed end moment due to external loading only. And we have to analyze FEM using uh, using side sway frame using side sway, using delta only. OK, so we apply the principle of superposition. So. So in side sway frame analysis, we will have two tables. One is table uh, table one in part one uh, in part one. Part one is analysis of analysis of uh, non sway frame. So to uh, non -sway frame as as shown in diagram B. So in diagram B, we put an artificial support at uh, at B because this uh, frame uh, by looking at the loading the frame is tend to move to left direction this frame is tend to move towards left direction so we have to put the artificial support one artificial support at joint b so uh, in diagram b after putting an artificial support at point B. So there will be the restraining force in right direction. And this is now called as non sway frame. Non sway frame. So for non sway frame means we have removed the delta from the diagram. So when once we have removed the delta, so we can calculate FEM due to due to W only. OK, so by uh, Actually, we have to fulfill the principle of superposition because B is not equal to A. So in order to get back A, so we have to have another diagram. Another another diagram that is only uh, have delta. There is no external loading. It only has delta. OK, because we separate, we want to separate between external loading and delta. So in another in another frame, we have one same frame, okay, with same uh, same support condition, but in uh, diagram C, in diagram C, we apply R in opposite, means R is in left direction. So due to R at point B, so the frame is uh, is side sway frame. Side sway frame and the delta means uh, the delta, the side sway uh, occur at point B and point C. And we assume that the delta for point B and point C are similar. Delta for both. OK, so that is the principle of superposition. So table one, we will focus on diagram B and table two. I mean, side sway frame analysis. We will actually refer to another frame, not diagram C, because the delta in diagram C is the real one. So we cannot assume FEM. Without delta value, we cannot calculate FEM. Without delta, we cannot calculate FEM. And we cannot assume the FEM for the real delta. So we are not going to uh, analyze diagram C directly. So for table number two, part, part two, for side sway frame, we will actually introduce diagram D, which is proportional with diagram C, but it is subjected to R prime. OK. So that is the thing that I want to highlight in this uh, video, because uh, in part in part two, so we have two parts. Okay, I want to summarize. Okay, we have two parts. We have part one. We have part two. 
Okay, in part one, in part one, okay, we analyze diagram B. Part one is diagram B. Diagram B is non sway. Non sway frame. Why it is non sway frame? It is because the frame in diagram B is is properly restrained frame after putting an artificial support at point B. Non sway frame. And part two, we do not refer to diagram C directly. Indirectly, we are using diagram D. Diagram D for side sway frame. Okay, we are using diagram D for side sway frame. And diagram D is actually the same frame but it is subjected to R prime because it is it is also artificial. Okay, we introduce we introduce diagram D the same frame, but we we change R to R prime, delta to delta prime, and M to M prime. Okay, so focus on. Okay, diagram C and D now. Okay, diagram C and D now. Diagram C, we have this. So, we have another one, same. With one pin and one fix. Okay, in diagram D, in, in diagram C first, this is C. This is D. In diagram D, this uh, frame is subjected to R in left direction because because this frame is tend to sway to left direction. This is R. Okay, so in diagram D, we draw the same but we label as R prime. We draw the same but we label as R prime. Okay, and due to R, due to R, Due to R, okay, we measure the, the delta. The delta is, the delta is, okay, it is delta at B and, and C. Okay, so this is A, B, C, and D. Okay, side sway frame, side sway frame due to R. R is moving towards left direction, moving to left. So delta occur at B and C. B and C, the the the, the similar value for B and C, it, uh, it is delta. So in diagram D, diagram D also have, also occur the same thing. Sway. Okay, sway. But this, okay, this frame in diagram D, in diagram D, the delta is labeled as delta prime. We have the same. We have same. But we change sign. We change the label that we use. Okay, R to R prime, delta to delta prime. Okay, and N moment, and N moment, N moment for diagram C due to R and delta, the N moment is M. The N moment, the member N moment. And in diagram D, due to R prime and due to delta prime, the N moment is M prime. Okay. Okay, now we have to re uh, to, to, to compare these two diagram and we have to uh, 
to write one one equation based on r and m and r prime and also m prime okay this is because we are going to determine m we want to calculate n moment in diagram c okay listen carefully okay due to this diagram due to the principle of superposition okay diagram a has combination of external loading and delta and we apply principle of superposition because when we calculate fem we have to calculate the external loading and the delta separately we cannot combine in one formula so we have to have one uh, one frame where we can calculate fem due to external loading only because the the uh, the w is known value okay that is why we change the condition of frame to be the properly restrained frame so once we put an artificial support at point b the frame is properly restrained frame and properly restrained frame has no delta means we remove delta from the frame in b and in order to fulfill the principle of superposition we have to plus another one another frame so in another frame means at diagram c the delta we remove from b now we have to put delta in another diagram so it is in c so that is uh, that is why okay when we have r okay when we have r that is occur uh, from the artificial pin support and r is uh, is in right direction we have to have another uh, another r which is opposite which is opposite so positive r plus negative r to get back to zero to get back to zero okay so what we want is the moment the final end moment final end moment for diagram a we want this we actually analyze this okay we analyze this diagram a we want means we want to calculate fem for a and fem for a is actually combination of external loading and delta okay so let's say let's say at a the find the moment the 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 member and moment we call as m f the final end moment okay so table number one means part one is uh is from diagram b diagram b so end moment from table one end moment from table one is labeled as m not from table one for a properly restrained frame this is non-sway frame and moment from table one we label as m not and look at diagram c diagram c also has n moment diagram c also has n moment but we do not know the exact value because the delta is unknown because the delta is unknown we do not know the the exact value yet because the delta is unknown okay uh, but by looking looking at this diagram due to r there will be delta so due to delta there will be fixed end moment so due to fixed end moment there will be end moment but end moment in c is unknown and moment in c is unknown so we label this as m okay 
from principle of superposition, remember, we will calculate member and moment in diagram A. Diagram A is actually combination of two, external loading and delta. Okay, M0, we can calculate directly because the external loading is non-value. It is 30 kN per meter. Okay, but in C, the delta is unknown. So, we do not know the M value yet. The N moment, M, yet. Okay, so that is why when we analyze uh, te uh, analyze table number two, when we uh, move to table number two, the side sway frame, we do not analyze diagram C directly. We do not analyze diagram C directly. What we can do is we introduce diagram D. We introduce diagram D. In diagram D, we draw the same frame, but all is subjected to prime. Means that we draw the same diagram, same look, R, we put R prime, delta, we put delta prime, M will be M prime, the end moment. So table number two, this is table number two. Table number two is from diagram D, not diagram B, not diagram C. Table number two is diagram D. Okay, because, because why? In diagram D, we can assume FEM. We can assume FEM. We do not determine the delta value. We, due to delta prime, we assume we assume FEM for D. And after that, after we assume FEM, we calculate FEM, we complete the table, we get M prime. We get M prime. So, in order to get back, okay, to get the final N moment in diagram A, so we actually will get M uh, end moment, final end moment in A using principle of superposition. It is M0 plus M. To get final end moment, it is M0 plus M. Look at the diagram. We follow the formula, principle of superposition. Final end moment is equal to M0 plus M. Okay. Now, Okay, we will write one equation relating diagram C and diagram D. Diagram C and diagram D. Okay, in diagram C, in diagram C, we have M and R. In diagram D, we have M prime and R prime. Okay, M, M is unknown. M is unknown. Unknown in, in diagram C. And moment in diagram C, M. Okay, R, R. Do we know the value? Yes, of course, we know the value of R from step to C. Because in step to in step to C, after table number one, we will determine the restraining force. We will determine the restraining force. But the R value that we determine in step to C, we use here in diagram in diagram C the restraining force in the restraining force that we calculate in step 2C we use in diagram C okay so between M and R M is unknown R is known value now R is known value 
Okay, R is known value. So this one we get from step to C. Okay. And M prime, M prime is the end moment from table two. Table two is step three B. This one we get from step three B, M prime. And R prime, the calculation of R prime and R is actually uh, the same procedure, okay? After getting end moment from the table. So R prime, we get from step 3C. This R, we get from step 3C. Okay. Okay, now, can we write the M? Can we calculate M? So when we rearrange this, Okay, we group R together, R and R prime together. Okay, we bring this R to the other side. So R divided by R prime times with times M prime times M prime. Because we bring the R to the other side and we group R together, R over R prime. R over R prime, this is called as correction factor. Correction factor. So, from principle of superposition, principle of superposition, final end moment MF is equal to M naught, this is from table one, plus with R divided, uh, plus, with, plus with M first, plus M. Okay, M naught plus M. M naught, M naught, this is diagram B. This is diagram C. Diagram B, diagram C. This is A. A is equal to B plus C. Means M final is equal to M naught plus M. M naught, M naught is from this one, from table one. Table one. But M, we do not know yet until we substitute. Until we substitute this. So we change M, okay? So we get M naught plus R divided by R prime times M prime. So this one, M naught is step two B, two B. This one, M prime, step 3B. Okay, R, this is step 2C. R prime, this is step 3C. Okay? And last step is step number 4. Step number 4. This is step 4. This is step 4. Okay, step four means that the final end moment, okay, the final end moment MF is equal to M naught plus R divided by R prime times M prime. So this is the equation to calculate the final end moment for side sway frame. Okay, so this is for diagram A. This is for diagram A. Okay, so understand the concept. First, 
then only you can do whatever question given.